All right, we're group seven. We're gonna be talking about substance abuse in the aging population. First, we'll go over the scope of the problem. We'll then talk about some concerns and challenges. And then we'll talk about the opportunities for pharmacists to intervene. And then we'll next discuss some of the solutions that we've proposed for how pharmacists can be more involved in addressing substance abuse in the aging population. The baby boomer population is considered people who were born between 1946 through 1964 and were the first in U.S. history to use illicit drugs. It is expected that by 2030, 20% of the population will be baby boomers over the age of 65. The trend of substance abuse in the elderly population is expected to increase as the baby boomer population ages. For example, illicit drug use has more than doubled from 2.7% in 2002 to 6.3% in 2011. Alcohol is one of the drugs that is currently abused and is considered one of the worst drugs to withdraw from. Prescription drugs that are abused by the elderly population are considered potentially inappropriate medications. These drugs include benzodiazepines and opiates. These drugs mixed with alcohol can cause serious health problems and lead to hospitalization. This can cause a multitude of problems not only for the elderly population but for society as a whole. Studies have shown that 90% of older adults use prescription over-the-counter medications. This creates another avenue for adverse effects such as drug-drug interactions, leading to increased hospitalizations, nursing home placement, or death. It's also difficult to attain the history of illicit drug use in the elderly population, and this may be due to their tolerant attitudes. Often the elderly also tend to hide their substance abuse, and the focus of the patient encounters are typically either on the acute or the chronic conditions at hand. Currently, there's a lack of age-specific substance abuse programs, meaning that many programs are designed for younger population and they're not readily accessible by older adults. The simultaneous loss of a spouse, social support, the loss of income, or personal identity have made patients at a higher risk for reporting depressive symptoms and negative emotional states, such as boredom, depression, or loneliness. There's also physiological changes in the brain in, in the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of drugs, in addition to a loss of receptor stimulation and an overall functional decline that the elderly patients experience. Pharmacists face several challenges when addressing the issue of substance abuse in the elderly. First, current diagnostic criteria do not account for social and physiological changes that occur within this population. This results in an inaccurate representation of substance abuse among the elderly. Second, consequences of substance abuse in the elderly are often indistinguishable from normal age-associated deteriorations. This overlap in signs and symptoms may lead to underdiagnoses or misdiagnoses. Third, the current healthcare system is not equipped to care for the growing geriatric population. There are several notable deficiencies in our healthcare system, including gaps in the education of healthcare professionals, loose regulations in regards to clinical testing of medications, and ill public perceptions of the habits of the elderly. All of this culminates into poor quality of care. One advantage pharmacists have over other healthcare professionals is how accessible they are. The AACP, or the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy, has created a substance abuse and pharmacy education committee to help implement substance abuse education within colleges of pharmacy. Beyond developing a curriculum within colleges of pharmacy, pharmacists can also complete residency programs to become geriatric specialists. These programs prepare pharmacists to help geriatric patients in many ways beyond substance abuse. Substance abuse is most often overlooked in the elderly by many healthcare professionals. Pharmacists having the most patient interactions can play an important role in substance abuse by inquiring and profiling all medications, OTCs, herbals, and supplements. They can also assess the patient's profile for potential drug-drug, drug-herbal, and drug-alcohol interactions for undesirable side effects. 
These effects may include falling, sleep disturbances, and urinary problems in the elderly. Another solution could be for pharmacists to take advantage of the Florida Prescription Drug Monitoring System, which is the state of Florida's prescription drug monitoring program. Using the system could allow for all healthcare professionals to see what is being prescribed and dispensed to elderly patients. This can help alleviate polypharmacy and prohibit the patient from obtaining potentially inappropriate and substance abusing medications. Lastly, pharmacists can incorporate and implement the Beers criteria in their practice to detect existing medications that are potentially inappropriate. If a potentially inappropriate medication is prescribed, the pharmacist could communicate this information to the prescriber so that an alternative medication could be prescribed. This practice could help to increase patient safety because it would reduce the amount of potentially inappropriate medications being prescribed at the point of care.